equivalent or total resistance is what we're going to talk about today. Basically what it is, is just the total resistance of a group of resistors in a circuit. First we have to reiterate what a series circuit is. And a series circuit has one loop or path for the current to flow through. There's no junctions where the current will split off. A parallel circuit has more than just one path. There's many junctions here you can see where the current can split off. So there's many loops or paths that the current can take. An analogy we like to use is think of people all lined up trying to flow into Wonderland. And we're going to say that the people flowing is the current. The turnstiles that they have to go through will be our resistors or our loads. So if we put a lot of turnstiles in a line so that the people have to go through one and then the second one and then the third one, the more the people flow will back up or the current is going to be reduced. However, if we stick the turnstiles all parallel to each other, then the more the flow will increase, more people will be allowed through. So we're going to get increased current. So the summary of this analogy is that connecting resistors in series or all in a line will decrease the amount of total current since your total resistance is actually increased. However, connecting your resistors in parallel, sort of all beside each other, will actually increase the amount of total current since the total resistance is actually decreased. So now we have to develop some formulas in order to be able to calculate total resistance. So first we're going to develop the series circuit, series circuit formula. And we're going to do that through the use of Kirchhoff's law and Ohm's law. If you recall, Kirchhoff's voltage law said that in a series circuit, the sum of all the voltage increases has to equal the sum of all the voltage decreases. So in our case here, we're basically saying the voltage of the source is going to equal the voltage across resistor 1 plus the voltage across resistor 2 plus the voltage across resistor 3. Now we use Ohm's law to replace voltage with current times resistance value. Now in a series circuit, remember there are no junctions, so the current doesn't split off anywhere. It's the same everywhere. So you can see here, we've said the current is the same. Let's just divide both sides of our equation by it. And we end up with our formula. That the total resistance for a series circuit will just be the sum of all the individual resistor values. So now, Parallel circuits. Again, we're going to start off with Kirchhoff's law, but this time we're going to start off with his current law that says the total current going into a junction, in this case we've called it I total or I parallel, is equal to all the sums of the currents leaving the junction. So in our case we're saying that total current equals current through resistor 1 plus current through resistor 2 plus current through resistor 3. Now we replace it with the use of our Ohm's law and then we recall that voltages in a parallel circuit are all the same. So we divide both sides by that and we end up with the formula for parallel resistance. Before we actually do an example, I'm going to go through some of the steps that we're going to use. An important step is that you're going to start away from the source in your calculations. And then the trick is to keep combining the resistors together until you have one resistor, which is a combination of all of them. You're going to use the proper formulas. If they're in parallel, you use that formula. If they're in series, you'll use the series formula. 
and please use proper notation. If you combine R1 and R2, call it R12. Don't just use numbers. If you just use numbers and you get a mistake, I cannot follow your work and you won't get any marks. Okay? So let's now do an example. Here we're going to start away at this end, away from the source. We're going to look at resistor 5, and then we look at the next resistor closest to it, which happens to be R4. And then we have to think, okay, so are they in series or in parallel? And I think you can see they're in parallel. So we use the proper formula and we combine them in parallel. Remember, once you get the answer, if it's 1 over R45, you are going to have to reciprocate it to get R45 of 2 ohms. Now what we could do is we could redraw the circuit and replace that with one resistor of 2 ohms, which we're doing on this slide. Now we take a look at R45 and say what's closest to it. Not R2, don't make that mistake. The one closest to it is R3. So, are they in series or parallel? They're in series. So we use our series formula. We combine them together and we get 10 ohms. Now we can replace that with a 10 ohm resistor called R345, which we've done here. Then we take a look at R345 and say, okay, the next thing would be R2. Are those in series or parallel? They're in parallel. There's a junction here. If you can't see that, you know, you could swing this over here and maybe it would be easier for you to see that they are in parallel. We use the proper parallel formula and we'll end up with R2345 being 5 ohms. So now, we have this circuit, and you can clearly see that those two are in a line, they're in series, we use our series formula, and we get our total resistance. R12345 is 15 ohms. So now, when you do these calculations, you may at the beginning want to do it like I did, and redraw the circuit every time you combine. However, once you get better at it, I'm not, I do not need you to actually redraw the circuit every time, okay? As long as you use your proper notation along the way, I don't care whether you redraw the circuit. So if you can do it without redrawing, that's fine. So now, let's see how you do on these examples.